What a sh... We have 122 amps outside. Guys, welcome back to the off-pit garage in super sunny, super hot Australia. I have limited the charge current into the battery uh, one and a half weeks ago. It was pushing over 250 amps into the battery again. And, and we have only a 250 amp main breaker. Guys, this is a very special episode today because we are going to stop testing. I will not test any further. That will be it. Hmm? What? No, 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 no. This is not the end of the off-grid garage. I'm, I'm talking about the battery shelf. Remember, we are doing a long-term test with it. And today we will have a look at the result. So if you are new to the channel or cannot remember what we actually have done with the battery shelf here. So let me do a quick recap here. So since we built this battery shelf here, uh, one and a half, Years ago, I charged these batteries to 55.2 volts only, right? This is all set in the solar charge controllers. And we know from the many tests we have done here with the lithium iron phosphate batteries that charging to 3.45 volts with a bit of absorption time charges the battery to 100% state of charge. There's no need to charge higher unless you don't have time and want to charge quicker. But here with our solar setup, we've got all the time. So a bit of absorption time doesn't really matter. 55.2 volts is 3.45 per cell. This was the maximum absorption voltage I have set in the solar charge controllers. And I kept this voltage for one hour to allow the balancer to work on these batteries to balance. And then afterwards, I went to a float mode setting of 3.35 volts per cell, which is uh, 53.6. Yes, thank you. And these are all very conservative and low voltage settings. But again, it charges the battery to 100%. It does everything what we need with the battery. And since I installed this battery one and a half years ago, I never, never had any issues with this setup, three different BMSs, different type of batteries in here, different capacity banks. It never missed a beat. It never disappointed. There was no error. There was no glitch. There was nothing. It just worked. Well, and then I discovered if I charge the battery a bit higher, I can actually see quite a bit of a voltage difference across all my battery cells in each bank. And people told me under the video, Andy, you are charging your batteries wrong. You need to charge to a higher voltage because the balancer will be far more effective and efficient balancing your pack. Well, I never saw a big imbalance in these batteries for the last one and a half years. So I said, well, why not? I don't know everything. Listen to these people and charge to a higher voltage. So I changed my charge voltage from 52, from 55.2 volts to 56.8 volts, which is uh, 3.45 to 3.55 volts per cell. And I also increased the float voltage from 53.6 to 55.2. And I had this running for six, eight weeks or so. So, and what happened then was that the battery in the top and the battery in the bottom actually reached the 3.65 volts. The over voltage protection of the BMS kicked in and it turned off these two battery banks. The middle one with the JK BMS and its two amp active balancer was totally fine. It could cope with that. It could balance the pack. It never turned off. The top and bottom battery bank here have only a BMS with a passive balancer, 100, 120 milliamps or so. And I wanted to see if people are right. And it balances over time. It, the deviation, the voltage delta gets better at least. And the BMS and the balancer can cope with a higher charge voltage and lower the voltage delta across our cells. Well, then after eight weeks, we had a look at the battery again and the voltage delta of the cells in the top battery and in the bottom battery did not change at all. There was no change. It was 100% the same as eight weeks ago when we started this test to charge to a higher voltage. So from a balance perspective, it did not make a difference at all charging to 3.45 or 3.55 volts. Okay, and then we said, 
well, if the voltage delta of these batteries is too high, the passive balancer may not be able to rectify that again, to, to fix it. So what I did, I connected an active balancer. You can still see the cabling there in the battery and here as well. And we connected an active capacitive balancer and did a full top balance of all three battery banks, I think to over 3.6 volts. Yeah, fully top balanced, about 10 millivolt deviation or something in each of the battery banks, 100% top balanced. And we said, well, if we are now super top balanced, let's give it another two or three weeks or something and see if these BMSs and passive balancers can maintain this top balance, right? Can they at least maintain it? Well, I guess and today is the day when we have a look at this result. I think it is four weeks ago now since we did the top balancing here. And we want to have a look today. We are at 95% state of charge, 54.8 volts and 124 amps into the batteries. So I will prepare all my devices now. We do a screen recording of all three BMSs again and see what is going to happen once we hit the 55.2 and then charge further to 56.8 volts. Hey, how can I remember all these numbers in my age? It is incredible. And then I also want to charge a bit higher to 3.6 volts per cell and see and if our top balancing is still intact. So that's the task for today. Okay, my friends, we are back with the three screen recorders here. I have arranged on your screen. On the left, we have the Heltec BMS, which is in the top battery shelf. You can see a deviation of 26 millivolt at 55.3 volts. And we are still charging with 31 amps. And we can also see balancing is active. You can see these flashes here in the battery symbols telling us the balancer for this cell is active. Cell number one to 10 is balancing again, but also number 14 and 15. In the middle, we have the JK BMS with two amp active balancer. This one is active as well already. 80 amps still charging and the deviation is 72 millivolt. And here on the right, we have the overkill solar BMS in the bottom shelf, which has just stopped charging. Now, ah, there was a bit of cloud situation at the moment. So 14 amps still going into this BMS. We are at 55.7 volts and deviation is only 37 millivolt at the moment. And here as well, the back. So here this weird construct in the Heltec BMS, cell number one to 10 are balancing. They obviously are higher voltage cells than all the other ones in the pack. And in the overkill pack in the bottom shelf, we can see cell number 15 is our lowest cell. And now we've got a bit of a cloud situation. We are actually discharging the battery pack. Nice. That's what you exactly want during a test, right? The last time when we used these balancers in here, I also forgot the plastic bag in the compartment now. <laughs> it's like the surgeon forgets the instrument in your body. Not great. Okay, the sun is now back. We are at 56 volts charge voltage. You can see the balancer in the Heltec BMS is also affecting cell number 12, 14 and 15 now. So there is a bit more of consistency across these cells here. So we have now reached our charge voltage of 56.8 volts with all three BMSs. We are slowly absorbing the Heltec around five amps. The JK BMS still takes 32 amps and the overkill BMS or battery takes only two amps. Deviation is 80 millivolt in the Heltec, 107 in the JK and 56 volts in the overkill. Okay, I would say we leave this running here for 20 minutes or so on 56.8 volts until the batteries have fully absorbed and are settled. And then we have a look at the deviation and increase the voltage to um, 57.6. Yes, thanks. So, and we are now balancing or absorbing for a bit over half an hour. We are still at 56.8 volts. And here on the left, the Heltec BMS, I think it has stopped balancing for some reason. It just stops at some stage. Maybe it's a timing thing or whatever. And we can see a deviation of 122 millivolts at this point of time. Not really great. 
The JKBMS in the middle shelf battery has a deviation of 17 millivolts only. So the balancer gets this battery under control. Even we start with a higher deviation in this battery. The active balancer is just superb and has no trouble balancing this 280 ampere hour 16S battery within half an hour. And down in the bottom shelf, the Overkill BMS has a deviation of 45 millivolt around. Uh, the balancer is still active if there is a charge current because it's a charged balancer. So deviation is still kind of okay, but it doesn't improve anymore unless there is a charge current. Sometimes there is a bit of charge current coming into the battery to hold the voltage stable and then the balancer kicks in for just a split second. But this is not enough to improve the balance situation here. So now as promised, let's connect to the carport charger because this is my master. This is the mothership of my MPPTs and all the other ones are listening to this one. So absorption voltage, we increase this one to uh, 57.6. We go back into our batteries and the charging current should increase in all three batteries now. Altec BMS has turned off with a over voltage protection. So it does charge only to 57.2 volts around. And then cell number 10 has reached the 3.65 volts. The JK BMS in the middle is um, at 31 millivolt deviation no trouble here with the active balancer and the overkill in the bottom is at 61 millivolt deviation slightly increased but still okay and has the battery under control so what we can see here now in the battery shelf is that the Heltec VMS at the top here has turned off because one of the cells has reached 3.65 volts so the BMS was not able to maintain our perfectly top balance of 3.6 volts per cell which we have created four weeks ago. The JK BMS in the middle shelf battery here has no trouble because of the active balancer, keeping the battery under control under almost any circumstances. And here down in the bottom shelf battery with the overkill BMS, deviation has slightly increased. That means that the overkill BMS is not able to maintain the perfectly done top balancing at 3.6 volts. So deviation voltage delta in this battery pack will get worse over time until this BMS also turns off when one of the cells hits 3.65 volts. So from this testing again here, I can say that the passive balancers won't work in my systems here. Two different BMSs, pretty much the same result. They were not able to fix the top balancing. They were not able to maintain the top balancing, except the JK BMS with the active balancer so anyway guys what is the verdict of this whole testing now here well i can say for me there's no benefit to charge to a higher voltage so i will set my solar charge controllers again to charge to 55.2 volts absorption voltage for one hour give the balancers a bit of time to do their job and then i fall back to 53.6 volts only and keep them there on the float voltage this would be the natural rest voltage of the cells anyway. This is in no way an elevated voltage for these battery cells. So this whole means you should not change your settings. If your battery is working fine with 56 volts, 57 volts, 58 volts, and you don't have any of your cells hitting 3.65 volts, leave the battery as it is. If it works, there's no need to change anything. I'm just not a big fan of keeping the battery at a high voltage for no particular reason. So that's why I charge only to 3.45 volts and it keeps the battery 100% charged and happy. If you want to see the results charging to 3.4 and 3.5 volts with and without absorption, I link this video down below as well. Amazing test results which show you how to charge lithium ion phosphate. Okay guys, I have big plans for the battery shelf. I am in contact with an incredible person here in Australia who has developed a device. I don't want to spoil it and tell you too much, but there will be changes coming to the battery shelf and most likely it won't be the new JK BMS. And now after exactly two weeks, I still haven't heard back from JK BMS team, the developers. 
they told me once they are still working on the Victron integration and it seems to work for them, but I didn't get a new firmware version. I haven't heard back from them at all, nothing. So there's no news on the new JK BMS. If they ever pull this off, I don't know. I cannot wait for that to happen. So I have arranged for a different technology in our battery shelf. And I had a look at it last night and it is amazing. It 100% does everything we ever wanted. Everything. And the developer is here in Australia. So be very excited about what is coming next here for the battery shelf. But for now, I'm changing the settings back to 55.2 and 53.6 and charge my batteries to 100% at this voltage. Guys, please share your experience and charging settings underneath the video here for others to look at. There are many people out there who are just starting with the battery technology and don't know how to set these values correctly. I made lots of tutorials about the JK BMS or the Victron systems or solar charge controllers in general, the knee active balancer and many other devices. I link this all down below under the video. If you are new to the channel, welcome. There is heaps to watch. As always, guys, thank you very much for watching. Thanks for all your insane support here on the channel. There are beautiful people out there who are donating to the channel as well. Buying me a beer from time to time so I can, so I can orientate my solar panels correctly. And until the next video, guys, you stay charged, stay safe, and thanks again for watching. See you then. Bye-bye. Yeah, bye-bye here from hot Australia. Fifty five point two absorption. Fifty three point six is my float.